you are going to get soul lifting messages, faith based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. I was glad when they said unto me, You see, that church is a good place. It truly is. Please sit down. So the thief cometh not, but for to steal, please give it to us again, to kill and to destroy. Jesus contrasts it and says, I am come that they may have and they may have it more. Look up. There is a difference between life and abundant life. Oh, what is getting me into this thing this night? Life and abundant life. Listen carefully. By the way, well, since this is koinonia, let me just caution you lovingly over some of these blind shouts that sometimes when the word of God is coming, the energy it takes to receive is the same energy you are wasting in unnecessarily shouting. There is a, listen, I won't say this anywhere. This is, this is home and God is training us. Are we together? Yes. We must be thoroughly furnished. Sometimes, I'm, I'm not, I don't mean to insult you, but, but just listen to, if, if it's to laugh, when it's laughable, all of us know. But some of these shout, most times, people who do these things are not getting it. I'm saying most times, not all the time. And please don't feel bad. I'm not, I'm not, this is a family. No one condemns anyone. But it's just a, it's just an honest, honest word of caution. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Am I seeing well? Is that Her Majesty? I'm so sorry. Please let's celebrate her. Her Majesty, the wife of the Olu of Wari. God bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. My sincere apologies. Yes. They are part of us. We are family. It's good to hear this kind of thing and turn any kingdom to faith, subdued kingdoms. Praise the Lord. Are we together? God bless you, Ma. Thank you. Such an honor to have you around. Where was I? I was cautioning, I was cautioning and, and calling for diligence as the word of God. Listen, two people acted this way in Jesus' days. Mary and Martha. Is it in your Bible? Remember the things that are written at four times, they are for our learning. Martha was running around doing all kinds of things and she was not getting it. Mary sat quietly and was listening. Here's what Jesus said. Martha, Martha, you are worried and offended about so many things. But he says this one thing, one thing is needful and this Mary has chosen to sit down at the master's feet. Now please look up. Because it is true that this kingdom operates by knowledge, number one. Because it is true that you were created in the image and the likeness of God. Number three, because it is true that there is an adversary and the Bible is not silent about him. God decided to invent a formula to ensure that believers remain victorious. And that formula is the word of God in partnership with the Holy Spirit, in partnership with gifts, men and women of God who he has sent. Are we together now? yes that when god grants you access to a spiritual family god grants you access to spiritual voices god grants you access to scripture he grants you access to the holy spirit he has supplied to you the weapons of victory the men and the women of god interpret scripture they instruct you according to jeremiah 3 15 in knowledge and in wisdom that is their assignment to feed you to give you that spiritual nourishment are we together so they give you understanding they give you knowledge the word of god opens you up 
the Holy Spirit comes to back you among the many things that the Holy Spirit does he is the custodian and the administrator of the anointing everything that has to do with the anointing is in the office of the Holy Spirit what is the assignment of the anointing I have taught you here the assignment of the anointing is to insist that the Word of God does not look like a lie so if there is no word that proceeds the anointing has no ministry the assignment of the anointing is to validate the claims of jesus as revealed in scripture so when the bible says god heals now the anointing comes to prove that that statement is true if god says i am able to lift men you see why the anointing follows the word this is the biblical strategy for administering the anointing there must be a statement that you must put on ground first something the bible says should be done then the anointing you can beckon on the holy spirit now just dispensing the anointing without a scriptural basis the devil will easily steal into that atmosphere and delve people into superstition and all kinds of extra biblical manifestations and there are sincere and well-meaning people who are victims of this why because they were not methodically discipled they were not methodically mentored hallelujah so everything that we share week in week out uh, among other factors spiritual arsenals that are equipping you why are they equipping you so that number one you have enlightenment knowledge but number two so that you will know how to use these tools that have been given to produce results why are your results important John chapter 15 and verse 8 John chapter 15 and verse 8 this is why you need results in your life herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit so shall ye be my disciples why do you need results in your life matthew chapter 5 from verse 13 the bible says you are the salt of the earth it says is that true the salt of the earth that means you add value and you preserve your territory you are salt you need that result it then says that you are the light of the world the definition of darkness is the world without you you are the light of the world there are names that are exclusive to god alone man cannot claim that name but when it has to do with light both god and man are light there are names that he freely shares with us one of it is he is the son of god we are sons of god one of it is his light we are light are we blessed do you know why i believe the holy spirit just took me this route because everything that we teach in this house by god's grace must be seen with respect to all the things that are aforementioned when you begin to teach believers mysteries in the kingdom that are not connected to a larger body of truth they, this is where carnality comes in for instance if you begin to teach on things like maybe say wealth and prosperity you begin to teach on things like career destiny and the rest teaching it in isolation to kingdom come teaching it in isolation to the revelation of jesus will only fuel the existing lost in many people you see why some of these teachings seem to destroy but when it is brought in perspective then you see that jesus is glorified jesus is revealed hallelujah can we teach tonight now father open my eyes and let me see please lift your voice and pray for the way of the lord is the way of wisdom For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I felt very strongly stirred. By the way, our series on the various graces, there's one more left 
on love but i suspended it because there is another series that you'll be part of there is a grace that can cause men to love god and to love men it is a grace that is at work in this house and um but we'll leave it and attach it to another series that is coming is that true tonight very briefly and then we'll pray i'm teaching on the spiritual pathway to greatness please i pray that you pay attention this is a very powerful teaching that will be relevant both for you your loved ones and those who are connected to you it is important that we learn the ways of god the bible says that in the last days when the mountain of the lord is lifted above every other mountain and every hill it says nations will come and men will say come let us go to the mount of the lord the house of jacob and he will teach us his ways the spiritual pathway to greatness the bible clearly tells us that everybody has a great destiny in christ everyone born of god and everyone currently walking upon this earth right now has a great destiny in christ in hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7 hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7 paul was speaking and he made a quotation that was referring to jesus but then by extension to his church and to believers in general then said i lo i come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will O god that means there is no such thing as happenstance or mistakes that everybody who came has something connected to their lives and their destinies as far as god god's predeterminate counsel is concerned no one walking on the earth is useless no one walking on the earth regardless how you arrived here provided you made it here there is an allocation as far as destiny is concerned for you if you're with me say amen, amen. this is very important the bible lets us know that in christ that we can have great destinies and that greatness is the heritage of the saints not just godliness but greatness these are some of the benefits and the provisions that we have as sons in light the heritage of greatness is our birthright the heritage of greatness is god's desire for every single one of us are we together philippians chapter 3 please let's read from verse 13 and 14 philippians chapter 3 from verse 13 and 14 lets us know we have a great destiny i count not myself to have apprehended he says but this one thing i do forgetting the things that are behind i reach for to those things that are before uh-huh i press towards the mark of the price of the high calling apostle paul says that he has a high calling his calling is not an ordinary calling his calling is a high calling of god in christ jesus everyone say i have a high calling one more time say i have a high calling that means there is nothing ordinary about your life and my life as far as destiny is concerned how about the heritage of greatness genesis chapter 26 and verse 13 genesis chapter 26 and verse 13 it says and the man works great say amen, amen. and went forward say amen again amen. and grew until he became very great a version says and he began to be great that means there was a day he was not the man works great he went forward he grew until he became very great why because isaac was coming from abraham and there was that covenant of greatness genesis 17 and verse 6 genesis 17 and verse 6 our heritage of greatness and an enviable destiny 
in Christ. I will make thee exceeding fruitful and I will make nations of thee. Say amen. amen. And kings shall come out of you. Amen. This is a promise. Now you see, whilst you hear the Holy Spirit reveal this to you, you are tempted and even manipulated by the devil to think of your background. And you're looking at where you're coming from. You're looking at all the things that have happened in and around your life. And like Nathaniel, you can say about yourself, like he said about Jesus, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Let's start the scripture. In Psalm 71 and verse 21, the Bible even tells us that not only does God desire for us to be great, but that the greatness he's given us can still increase. He says, thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. So we are examining the spiritual pathway, having established the fact that we have a high calling and we have an enviable destiny in Christ. We have established the fact that it is not sin and it is not antichrist and anti-God for the saints in light to desire greatness because God put it in everyone to be great. Is that true? Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 12 verse 1 and 2. This is the beginning of the encounter that Abraham who was an idol worshipper from Ur of the Chaldeans he would meet the God of the Hebrews who would later become his God and have a covenant with him that would be, become the basis for the coming of Jesus and even our redemption. 12 verse 1 and 2. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred, from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show you. If you love Jesus, read verse 2 with me. Ready? Read. And I will make of thee a great nation. Uh -huh. And I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. Just stop there. As at the time he was telling Abraham this, it had not yet happened to him. This was a prophetic word tied to conditions that if met will release and actualize this word. Are we together now? So he's telling Abraham, I know you are an idol worshiper and you have your house, your family, but I have chosen to call you. Now, when you study from scripture, the first person that was called was not really Abraham. It was his father, Terah. But the father did not meet the condition that made for this blessing. And now God comes to call Abraham. Come out of your father's house come out of all of these places because this is what i want to do this is your destiny i want to make of thee a great nation i want to bless you i want to make your name great thou shall be a blessing in fact let's read verse 3 verse 3 please give it to us it says i will bless them that bless thee and curse him that cursed thee there is a revelation here i want you to learn for every one person who curses you there are many them who blesses who bless you you see the ratio i will them that bless you him that curse you there are always more people willing to bless you and partner with god over your life than one person who may want to curse you so if the person in your village is one we are here the family is here the angels are here and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed now you may be tempted to say that this is just for abraham but Paul gave us perspective in his Pauline epistle that when God made this promise, it was to Abraham and his seed, D, that seed being Christ. And Galatians chapter 3 and verse 29 says, And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. That means what he told Abraham through Christ can become our reality. You see the connection now? It is from Abraham through Christ now it is our reality so greatness is our destiny and when i say greatness i don't mean some of this carnal pursuit for greatness that has no kingdom perspective remember that we already gave a background tonight that everything that we seek and everything that we communicate it is the whole counsel of god but it is res with respect to the revelation of jesus and the glorification of the same he says and i if i be lifted from the earth i will draw all men is that true 
and i've shared with you that one of the ways that god gets glory is by glorifying the sons every father is glorified when his sons are glorified john 17 and verse 1 jesus lifted up his eyes unto heaven and he prayed a prayer and he said father the hour is come here is the protocol for god being glorified glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee so if the sons are not glorified the father cannot be glorified this is the principle of shared dominion the father does not glorify himself his glory comes from the excelling of the son the son does not glorify himself his glory comes from the excelling of the church in partnership with the holy spirit the church cannot glorify herself her glory comes from her dominion over the cosmos principalities and powers inclusive so everyone in the Kedah has the glory that they receive dominion over creation is how the glory of the church is revealed the dominion of the church is how in partnership with the holy spirit is how the son is glorified and in the glorification of the son the father is glorified no confusion this is the protocol have we learned today but there is a biblical pathway and i'll be very fast over this so that we'll pray many believers do not know that there is a protocol to greatness they desire to be great in ministry they desire to be great in business in career and so on and so forth and for many people um, we just guess and shadow box our way and we are not able to attain that level of spiritual efficiency to rise so that we can do much for the kingdom now in your desire to be great the first information i want to bring very quickly tonight is that with respect to greatness there are two principal seasons in the life of everyone with respect to greatness with respect to the subject of greatness there are two principal seasons in the life two principal seasons are you ready the season number one is called the season of preparation please write it down the first season that every believer in Christ who desires to do much for the kingdom especially at this end times there is no instant manifestation in the kingdom the season of preparation please pay attention to the things you'll be learning the season of preparation It is important for you to know that if you are not prepared for anything on the day of manifestation you will fail is that true even in a, a human context there are students who prepare for exams and they excel there are people who have to prepare for interviews for promotion and if they prepare and they do write the interview or whatever it is in whatever form the interview comes when they excel they are promoted and then they increase in rank that is how it is also in the kingdom two major seasons very quickly the season of preparation now there are three phases under this season i want to rush very quickly there are three phases under this season of preparation the first phase is called the face of discovery please pay attention the face of discovery you will never be able to actualize destiny and you will never be able to walk in the fullness of your call until you go through this phase of discovery please look up many people violate this phase of discovery and yet they want to be mightily used by God yet they want to become influences and references across territories it does not happen that way this is the spiritual protocol non-negotiable no exceptions the season of preparation and the first phase in that season is the season of discovery are we still together what do you discover number one your first discovery in life if you want to be great is to discover god discover
sovereign God God Almighty that encounter with the God of the Bible is the first thing anybody who wants to be great the kingdom's way you must go through that phase of discovery hear me the first thing you discover is not the family you come from in order of importance the first thing you discover people discover all kinds of things but God the scriptural basis for this is found in Genesis 1 verse 1 in the beginning God that is the spiritual protocol Genesis 1 verse 1 in the beginning the first four words recorded in the Bible in the beginning of anything you start with God in the beginning of business God in the beginning of ministry God in the beginning of marriage and a home God in the beginning of parenting when you violate that formula you have compromised on greatness God's way now you can route greatness through some other formula and then face the consequences of the side effects that come with them are we learning now in the beginning now most times people involve God but he does not take that first place we add him like you are putting salt in soup and we just add him go okay God so you don't harass me okay you are here no the protocol is that he must be the author otherwise he cannot be the finisher if he's not the author he will not be the finisher are we together now yes in the beginning God so you discover God we see this in the life of Moses I wish I had time but I want us to pray but just write for reference in Exodus chapter 3 from verse 1 to 15 exodus chapter 3 the text for this is 1 to 15 but give us verse 13 for the sake of time the bible tells us about this hebrew boy who was saved from death and then he ran away from egypt and was at the back side of the mountain tending jethro his father-in-law's ship and then he's open to an encounter before he discovered any other thing he discovered god the god of the hebrews moses said behold when i come to the children of israel and shall say to them the god of our fathers hath sent me to you and they shall say unto me what is his name what shall i say unto them very good question and god said unto moses yad hey wah hey yahweh i am that i am and he said thus shall you tell them it is true that they want to be delivered but this is what i desire i desire that they know me i am has sent you are we together so the first thing you have to discover is god most people don't pay attention to god can i tell you this in your spiritual training with god let me give you an advice and you can use this as a template to mentor other believers when you are starting with believers don't start teaching them things about success prosperity when you really want to mature believers this is the way god led us this is the way god led our fathers this is the way god led people from scripture when you meet god he does not talk about any other thing yet himself until he reveals himself so when you are training believers you must take dedicated time to expose them to god everything god passion for god fire for god then when that foundation of god is settled you can now begin to delve into other subjects if you compromise this you are going to have people who are lopsided in their growth the formula is in the beginning god the first thing you discover is god number two for the sake of time the second discovery is yourself the second discovery is yourself now that you have discovered God you can discover yourself if you do not know who you are Sinaj taught us in her song that if you don't know who you are there are many things you will not be able to walk in you cannot walk in power you cannot walk in miracles you cannot live a life of favor why you don't know who you are
the nation of Israel forgot their identity that they were a covenant people and when they were sent to go and spy the land they came back with an evil report they said we were like grasshoppers god didn't say it satan didn't say it they said it to themselves it's not like satan said repeat after me you are grasshoppers we are grasshoppers no no by themselves they call themselves grasshoppers i'm walking in power I'm walking in miracles I live a life of favor. I know I'm walking in power. I live a life of favor. Very important. You must know who you are. We teach in our school of ministry, and 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 there is a course where we teach the students who you are you know and i teach them in that course that there is something called identity crisis let's borrow two minutes of their lecture there is something called identity crisis you know what identity crisis is identity crisis is the resultant effect of not comprehending your worth the moment you do not know who you are the devil and men and this bedeviled world will paint a picture that you are not there are many people today who are under needless pressure trying to be who and what they are not it's not in the blueprint of their destiny because i taught you here remember i don't know what discussion we're having when i taught you that psychologically speaking there are certain indices that measure fulfillment is that true yes one of it is security another is variety one of it is growth another is love and acceptance there is a craving in the human nature for love and acceptance and chances are that if you have not stayed with the word are we together now yes like bishop david oedipo will say to find out your picture from scripture to be able to find out this is what god has said concerning me this is who i am based on what scripture said not based on what your mind has said not based on what your background has said was it not paul that said there is as it were many voices and that none of them is without effect your background has a voice remember who you are failures all through and you hear that voice then unfortunately and i know and i pray that it's changing thank god for christian schools but if you are not fortunate to go to a school that calls upon the name of the Lord, now you hear another voice added to that negativity by, by teachers and all of that. They look at you and say, you are dull, you are almost demonic. I don't know how you got here. I don't even know where you are going. And I can tell you because you respect them, you will believe it. And then, with every sense of respect and apology, parents have a major role in in destroying the self-worth of children by the time you begin to minister words causes and words that are not consistent with scripture by the time an average child is 10 12 years subliminally he has already received all kinds of suggestions about who he is so now that they think they are weak the devil will now begin to market templates that can make you belong that's why people join occultic societies that's why people join all kinds of things they say they want to belong when satan came to jesus the first test was the test of identity the first test the very first test was a test of identity if you are truly the son of god turn these stones to bread jesus said i don't need to prove to you the voice already spoke that i am his beloved son man shall not live by bread alone but every word you had the word when he announced it everything under heaven had it including you don't ask me that question you already know i'm the son of god so when life and friends and society sadly and the sociological context of our world now forces you to do things and be things to show you are great you can tell them no 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 i'm a civilized person but i have limits i know who i am don't just tell me to dress the way you want to show i am civil to talk the way you want to live the way you want no within the boundary of 
of a civilized world i will conform to that which is an advantage but i know who i am based on scripture i am the beloved of god behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us in that we are called the sons of god there are many names that the bible calls us light salt ambassadors kings priests are we learning now so you discover god you discover yourself the next thing that you discover under that stage of discovery is you discover your abilities your giftings and your abilities please pay attention please pay attention there is always a rod in your hand oh dear moses that is the rod you will use to walk signs and wonders it is not only god you discover it is not only yourself you discover there is something god has given you that is the rod you are going to use moses be careful to not throw that rod one day you will need it to pass the red sea one day to become the symbol of your leadership can i tell you this everyone here seated looking at me following online and will be following by way of rebroadcast or whatever platform it comes through can i tell you sincerely there is something god has put within you that the world is desperately waiting for to receive this is not just some motivational talk this is truth based on scripture nobody came here empty everybody came here as an expression of the fullness of the life and the power of jesus if you are joseph we need your leadership and your ability to interpret dreams if you are deborah we need your strength and your dexterity in war if you are moses we need your passion to be able to communicate with god and prophetically drive the people out of captivity everybody in scripture that was used of god there were things god gave them david could sing he used that grace to write the psalms today that has brought all kinds of deliverance david was a warrior and he used to fight valiantly in his lifetime david had leadership everything david had eventually was featured in the palace what do you have in your hand that was what the lord told moses what do you have in your house second kings chapter five second kings chapter four please four i meant to say the bible says there was a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet second kings 4 from verse 1 she said unto elisha my servant thy husband is dead and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the lord and the creditor aha uh -huh, the creditor is come to take him to take unto him my two sons to be born men next verse please and elisha said unto her what shall i do for thee and he asked a question he says tell me what hast thou in your house hear the woman's reply this is the reply of many of us when destiny calls on you what do you have in this house of earthen vessel here's what we say nothing thine handmaid had not anything in the house except a pot of oil i have nothing except an ability to sing i have nothing except great charisma and leadership prowess i have nothing except passion and hunger for god i have nothing except the ability to be trusted be careful what you call nothing be careful what you call nothing i have nothing except some degree of business acumen i have nothing except that when i sleep whatever i see in my dream truly happens i have nothing except the dream that i have that i saw myself on a crusade ground while i was sleeping on a mat in a hut i saw myself speaking before nations that's all that i have he says what do you have you must discover what you have
can i tell you this every great man that you admire today whether in the kingdom or in the secular whether in ministry in politics in business they were men and women who among other factors got to a point in their lives where they discovered that there is something valuable that god has given me hear me your sense of self-worth among other factors is tied to the perception of the value you have about yourself we live respectfully speaking in a very fake world today where everybody tries to do this and leave this if you are not wearing this oh how how much is your shoe two thousand naira people laugh as two thousand naira did you make it yourself and people laugh and make you feel stupid and you stand there wondering what to do and then you go out of your way to live a fake life you've heard me say don't fake what can be real your self-worth is never about any exterior thing around you thank god for the beauty the glamour the grace that is wonderful but if you put your trust in anything outside you you are insecure can i tell you most of the things that we face in our world today especially as it makes for interpersonal relationships and all of that they are a derivative of this secret frustration psychologists have said it and i've taught you again that you look at life from the lens of the perception of your value if you feel you are not valuable you will interpret life from the lens of that frustration if you are a happy man the world is a happy place for you if you are a sad person the world is a sad place for you if you are a godly person in the midst of all the decadence that goes on you can see god you can see what he's doing if you are someone who is a failure you would look at life from the lens of your experience what sees thou is a is a report card is god speaking to us tonight so the first stage when you are preparing for greatness is discovery discovery of god as the almighty the beginning and the end the one who holds your life and your destiny and then number two discovery of yourself so that you become healed once and for all from the scar that society will try to bring as a result of the injury that they will give you for not trying to conform to certain patterns that society depicts to measure greatness so if you do not find 10 cars in my house for instance if you do not find a great mansion for instance if you do not find me wearing all the designers that should be nothing is wrong with these things in themselves if you don't see me speaking in a certain way if you don't see me snapping in front of an expensive vehicle society says you are failure and many of us have been deceived to believe it so we live our lives in secret and open frustrations trying to be what god already said you are are we blessed and then the discovery of your potentials i first heard this from the lips of my greatly revered mentor in life and in death dr miles munro when I read his book on discovering your potentials, when he said, here's what he said, that the wealthiest place on earth is not the gold mines in sub-Saharan Africa around, it's not, it's not the oil mines in Nigeria and Iraq and all of that. He said the most expensive, the wealthiest place on earth, he called it the symmetry why because that is where books died that were not written that's where dreams died that did not come to pass and he said little did he know that he would not live so long he said his assignment was not just longevity alone his focus was efficiency that jesus lived for 33 and a half years and his impact till eternity will continue to be felt and he gave his all and truly he died empty one of the last books he wrote before he went to be with the lord is called passing it on the principle of transgenerational relevance and legacy a man that cheated death indeed are we blessed you must find what it is that you have in your hands can i tell you this 
when the woman was saying nothing except a pot of oil the pot was hearing her and the oil was hearing her and here's what the oil was saying you call me nothing the same way your writing ability is saying do you know you can write about revivals is it not robert Lerden that wrote one book god's generals that set fire today only god knows how many ministries have come from that book all kinds of books gifts Billy Graham discovered that he had the ability to love the Lord and to communicate effectively and he deployed that gift in his evangelical operation and today arguably one of the greatest evangelists in modern history who has lived. What do you have in your hand? What do you have in your house? It is time to go back and stay with the Holy Spirit and take in intentional inventory of everything that constitutes an advantage in your life because everything God gave you that constitutes an advantage will be used for your destiny can I tell you this Satan will usually flash to your face all the negative things around your life many of us do not see anything glorious about ourselves you are poor he will make sure you see that one you don't speak well he will make sure you see that one you spend 15 years in the village he will drum it to your ears but the wonderful things god has made out of your life he will not allow you see in the name of jesus may you see clearly yeah. can i tell you this our fathers of faith in this nation fathers of faith across africa every one of them got to a point where they had to deploy that gift that God gave them to be able to serve the purposes of God today if you do not find that rod in your hand you will be ashamed when you stand before Pharaoh because there will be nothing that would demonstrate the glory of God it was the rod God gave Moses that was used to prove the almightiness of God if you neglect your gift there will be nothing in your life to prove indeed that God is mighty over you you must obtain grace from God seated here looking at me following in all the overflows outside from whatever nation whatever TV station there are people listening to me you have dreams God has planted things in your life can I tell you this when it looks like certain individuals are superstars the difference between a superstar and whatever is this discovery nobody is intrinsically exceptional above any other person no everybody born of a woman was once a baby in the hand of that woman even if you were born royalty you were still a baby dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaskade bashkana kata branda kate katos. Kate branda kata bakotos koto breka teke nekata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.